for the preparation of a face side which is a flat reference surface or datum surface from which our measurements for length, breadth and depth can be taken from. We'll also cover the preparation of a face edge which is a flat surface prepared at 90 degrees to the face side and that allows us to use a square to mark our measurements all the way around the board just working off those two surfaces and that helps an awful lot with regards to accuracy. If we put some pencil lines right across the board like this if we take a set of shavings with our very slightly curved blade through the piece of wood and work across the board where the pencil is removed we're removing material where the pencil is left then it's lower than the cutting edge of the blade once we've removed all of the pencil as long as we're consistent with moving the plane step by step across the board we should have a relatively flat surface. And then move across and put the middle of my blade where the pencil marks are just remaining. And then move across again. And again. And again. Just a few little bits of pencil remaining showing that there are a couple of little low areas. So I'll just remark that and we'll take another set. Now with the board flat I want a very slightly hollow inside all the four edges by taking stop shavings within the width. This will prevent my winding sticks from seesawing up and down on any sort of bumps. And just to complete, we'll continue doing that until the plane takes no shavings at all. Now we need to check for wind, which is that sort of relationship on the board. And to do that we use winding sticks. And then by sighting at the keys with one eye from a distance perhaps twice as far away as this gap, we can tell whether we have any twist in the board. To begin with we can quite easily see the two keys in the rear winding stick but as we lower our perspective the one on the left disappears and that's suggesting that the far right hand corner is high and the front left hand corner is high now this corner was high and this corner was high so to remove material from this corner we'll start taking shavings from just inside the low corner and we'll take that shaving right the way through. And to remove material from this high corner, we'll start our shaving from the edge of the board and shave through and just stop, lift off prior to the end of the board. So I'll start with a set of shavings, one stopped here, the other one 
started here and the, through the middle right the way through the board. Now we've taken a full shaving off this high corner and this high corner and we've left the opposing corners exactly the same height. And I think we can see that our high corners are still very slightly high. So we'll take another set of the shavings with a stop shaving either side to adjust for the twist. and we'll try again. And now I hope you can see that the keys are disappearing at exactly the same time. And here I'm just going to check with a straight edge that we do in fact have a very slight hollow. So that's our face side completed and we mark it like so. The next task is to produce a face edge which will be at right angles to the face side that will be flat and that means that we can mark all the way around the component using our two datum surfaces. Now I'm not sure if you can see it here but the left hand side is very slightly higher than the right hand side so we'll have to adjust for that. And I think you can see so we have a curved blade, much like the end of this. If we set it over the curve, more over the side we want to remove more from, we will be able to remove more material on that side than on this side. Just checking where our blade is coming through on our plane. And if we offset the centre of the curve to where we want to take more material we Now we just take as many shavings as we need until we've got it perfectly square and if there's still any ripple left over from the uh, original jointer then we'll take a, a few more shavings to get rid of that And that's lovely. As with the face side, we want the face edge to be very slightly 
hollow in its length. And at the moment, this actually has a slight hump in the middle. So we'll take stop shavings until the plane refuses to take any more material. So starting just inside the end, stopping just before the end. And again, and it's virtually given up now and that's just a bit of dust we'll have steps at either end so we'll take one shaving right through the middle And check that now pivoting at the one end pivoting at the other end so we've introduced a very slight hollow that's not significant if I put this thin piece of paper in the middle I think you can say we're pivoting in the middle again now so our hollow is less than the thickness of this thin paper. We must recheck for square against our face side. And hopefully today is a good day. Yes it is. We're still perfect. So our face edge is now completed. And we can mark it like so. The first step I'm going to take is to run a plane on the opposite side to the face edge just to make sure we have a surface which is smooth for running our marking gauge across and then I will shoot the ends of the board for the same reason. And that's good. To mark the depth of our component we use a marking gauge and I've made sure that my knife is currently sitting with the bevel away from the fence. Snug it up, double check, want a little bit more, and that's good. Now this can be tricky, we want to keep the stock flat against our face side at all times and not introduce any rock like that. So we'll put pressure underneath the bar on this gauge against our face side, like so. And then we'll pull and rotate into the work until our knife is just cutting and then we'll run a number of strokes just to increase the depth of our cut
it's far easier to do a number of light strokes than to try and make a full depth cut with your gauge in one go. And then I'll turn that over, continue on the other side. That's good. And then we need to do the ends. Because of holding this in my hands, it's a little bit trickier. And again, if you want to put this in the vise, you may find it easier. And we're very close to the, the right depth here, and you can see there's a little bit of breakout here and there from the top of that knife line. So there's very little material to remove here. Uh, if there was more, what we would do is set a, a thick shaving on our plane, work down towards the knife line, and then at perhaps a millimetre or so before the knife line, check all the way around and see the distance that's left. And if one side requires more removal than the other, we use our curved blade to bring the heavier side down further so that we have a consistent gap between a consistent thickness of waste material to remove. Now I just take sets of shavings until we reach the knife line. Setting the plane for a very fine cut since at the moment we're, we're quite close to our target. And now that we're incredibly close, I can actually see that this end is probably a shaving more away from the knife line than this end. So I'm going to take stop shavings from this end through to about here. And then a set of through shavings. And this time the wisp that is left above the knife line is so small, I think this will be our final set of shavings. Now, we don't know whether this surface is going to be a show surface or not. But what we do know is that all our measurements are going to be taken from the face side. So even if this is not hollowed out, as we did with the face side, we're never going to have the stock of our square or take any measurements from here. So all our joinery will be marked from the face side and the face edge and should be perfect. The next step of our component preparation will be to mark for length and cut to length. In this case, we are virtually square. 
if we had been out of square then we would have marked a line and then sawn to that line and then we would have shot the end with a plane since we are virtually square we'll go straight to shooting that end I want to prevent any tear out on my face edge and the planing stop on our Japanese playing board is not high enough to protect the whole of that edge so before we start I'm going to insert a parallel piece of hardwood in front of this stop so that we can protect our face edge The next step is to mark the length of our component and a few light strokes to establish that line are better than trying to do it in one go. Then we will transfer this mark all the way around our component. just gradually sneak up on your knife line taking fine shavings with your block plane that's lovely Once again, multiple strokes are much better than trying to cut the line too quickly. So now we have a gauge line knifed all around our component and we can reduce it in width. You can plane the material off the width of your board in a vise vertically like so or as I'm going to do shooting it using the planing rail on the Japanese planing board you may notice at the moment our board is hanging over the edge of our base here and the plane is not registering against the edge of our board. It's purely registering on the edge of our component and that's absolutely fine. We don't need a stop at the end to avoid tear out because of the grain direction and because we're away from the, the board itself we can set for a deeper cut and that will just speed the work on a bit and I can see there's a little more material to remove at this end than there is at this end so I'll take a stop shaving starting inside here inside of this end and running right through And a full shaving, observe it again and I think we need to take another one okay and we're getting very close now so I shall reduce my shaving thickness so just taking very fine shavings now as we approach our gauge line Uh, we'll double check on the other side and that's perfectly consistent with this side here so we'll take one more stop shaving and 
until the plane stops cutting and then the shaving right through. And that's wonderful. Now we have a component that has a consistent width. And a consistent thickness. Which is straight in its length, which is flat, whose face is at 90 degrees to its side, and whose ends are at 90 degrees to the face. And that's now ready for any joinery, for example dovetails, if it were to be a draw front or a draw side, and we can be assured that the marking out from this component now will be entirely accurate. Mm -hmm.